is Ali Nisek coming to you from the beautiful islands of Turks and Caicos here where I'm currently vacationing but I'm using even this time to do a quick video tutorial for you right here from the beach and uh, I'm going to share with you a clinical case that I recently did using the ESX instrumentation and obturation system along with the aid of the uh, EndoSync and EndoSync AI which is you know our new additions to our system that add the, uh, the benefits of OTR movement. Now a little video review of the EndoSync is on its way uh, and uh, but I figured I will share with you a little bit sooner this uh, this just this case uh, you implementing it clinically so obviously there's a lot of noise here in the background so we can't do this outside so why don't we go inside where I can share with you this case and uh, demonstrate the use of endosync and endosync AI uh, with uh, conjunction with the uh, ESX instrumentation obturation system Okay, folks, we're back inside and in the shade and away from the wind. And let's take a look at this case that I recently did using the EndoSync and EndoSync AI. It's a mandibular uh, first molar, and it has, as you can see, a little bit of calcification. There is a, a filling here that's present, uh, and um, it's actually cracked. And uh, as you can see, this would be a case that we would classify as an advanced case because of the calcification, especially in the mesial root. By definition, an advanced case is one in which the 1502 hand file is having difficulty reaching the apex, and that's what you would probably expect on the mesial roots of this particular case. So, uh, as usual, what we would do in uh, these types of cases is we always first uh, determine the, uh, the estimated working length, and here we estimate it to be 20 millimeters. I've skipped through the access preparation and so we can see that we've just removed the coronal pulp and you can see the uh, orifice of the canals and then what I do is I proceed to place this caulking material to try to break any or to seal any potential sh short circuits that may be present that could trip off the apex locator and uh, once the area has sealed and we have nice aseptic control then um, after curing we now have fairly good isolation here and you can see here that we have four orifices in this canal. As usual, the first thing I always do is use the orifice opener in an advanced protocol and we, you see that we're using the uh, rhythm motion which is basically three strokes to engagement. At this point the endosync is just doing pure rotation. It doesn't have any OTR function in there and uh, we follow uh, this 2008 in all four canals and here's the protocol of what we're trying to achieve after doing the rhythm motion in all four canals using the 2008 the next step would be to basically do hybridization of taper and what hybridization of taper is is the um, is using the rhythm motion with these three files which is the 1505 1504 and 1502 in a crown down fashion. So you do the rhythm motion, which is three strokes to engagement. And now at this point, you're uh, using the OTR uh, motion. So uh, 1505, three strokes, and then you change to 1504, three strokes, and then the 1502 um, uh, with three strokes. And most often, this just this one cycle of 1505 down to 1502 will get you down to the apex. But if you have a very tough case, you may have to do this twice as you go to 1505, 1504, 1502. But each file you will see will be dropping down uh, closer to the apex until you reach the apex. Once you reach the apex with the 1502, then you change the file to 1504 until you reach the apex and then to 1505 until it reaches the apex. So you move down from 1505 down to 1502 and then until the 1502 reaches the apex you have the working length and you can sometimes determine the working length as you will see here in this case with just the 1502 and then skip the hand files and then uh, once that's down then you get the 1504 down and then a 1505 down and then at that point uh, it's time to get to a finishing file and here we will choose a size 3004 and you would make a determination based on the case what would be your finishing file but here a 3004 would be chosen so that's the plan let's try to implement it so now we're moved on to this um, uh, hybridization of taper moving down so we use the uh, memory 2 m2 which has been programmed for 300 uh, rpm using otr and you can see here at slow motion this is what's happening with the OTR on the downstroke as soon as you engage the file to the level of the torque setting it starts to uh, engage the OTR 
uh, motion, which is basically 90 degrees counterclockwise and 180 degrees clockwise. So at this point, I'm using uh, the canal clean, which has EDTA in there, uh, in the tooth. And now we're moved from 1505 now to 1504. And you can see again in slow motion how the OTR is being engaged and it's working. And the goal here is to um, um, just um, make sure that the file is moving down as we're working. And we're doing it in each canal, one of each one of the four canals the same way. Um, the setup, as you can see, the endosync is connected to the endosync AI. Um, now we've done the 1505 and the 1504, it's time for the 1502. And like I mentioned, most of the time, the 1502 at this point will actually reach the apex. And with the memory two setting on the endosync, it means that it will stop. So here you can see we reached the apex mm -hmm. and therefore the file just mm -hmm. stopped. So um, we're um, uh, basically getting down and then the assistant would be moving the stopper to the, uh, to the reference point and then I would measure to see what kind of a length we have. And it does show that on the mesiolingual we're having a 20 millimeter lingual. length. So now we move on to the mesial buckle and basically do the same thing using the rhythm motion of three strokes to engagement to the OTR. And as you saw here on the third stroke, we already reached the apex. So in memory two, the handpiece is programmed so that when it reaches the apex, it stops. So we measure and the mesial buckle is 20 and a half millimeters. And uh, now we're doing the, uh, one of the distal canals, the same kind of a motion, uh, three strokes and then you take it out and you wipe it. And uh, then the, um, um, you kind of follow the same thing until, there we go, on the back next stroke, it was already down to the apex. And it stops. So the assistant is moving the stopper down to the reference point, and then I record it. And the distal buckle, I have 21 millimeters. 21 on the distal and now buckle. we do the other, the final um, canal, and you can see very quickly, that one reaches the apex right away and measure that one, and we also have 21 millimeters there. So the working lengths are recorded, and uh, we make a note of these. So as we planned, we did move down by this hybridization of taper after the orifice opener. We got ourselves down to a 1502 file reaching the apex. Now the goal is to get the 1504 uh, down to the apex. So we switch to the 1504, and now we can move back to the, um, to the memory one, which uh, moves the speed up to 500 RPM with OTR. So again, the rhythm motion, which is three strokes to engagement, removing the file, and then having the assistant use the endoswipe to clean the flutes from any debris that is engaged. And you basically do that in a, between every rhythm motion or every two rhythm motions, you make sure that you're irrigating to remove the debris. And you're not pushing the file, you're very gently allowing the file to follow that original path that's been created with the 1502 Scout, now enlarging laterally the taper to a 1504. And now the 1504 reaches the apex on the mesiolingual. So we do that in the same exact thing with the other files, uh, with the other canals. So we do, we try to get all of the other ones down to a uh, 1504. And at this point, the 1504 has reached the apex in all um, four canals. And the goal now is to move to a, uh, the next size up in our hybridization of taper sequence, which is a 1505. So the 1505 now is engaged, and we're going to again use the mesolingual canal here to demonstrate this. And you can see that it's moving down every time uh, a little bit more. So we're doing the three strokes to, en to engagement or three strokes to OTR. Make sure that you do use uh, ultrasonic and water periodically between each rhythm motion. And all that does is it helps remove any debris that's gotten loose. And um, you can see now the 1505 is reaching the apex. And um, now we just fast forward through the rest of the canals so that we don't end up wasting too much time watching um, all of these canals get to a 1505. But it's basically the same idea as what we did with the, fifth, with the mesiolingual canal. So now we have finally gotten the 1505 down to the apex. So this little protocol is, if you recall, in the advanced sequence, 
um, the basic sequence, the goal was to get to a 1505 and then have a finishing file. This additional files, which is the orifice opener and the two scout files, constitute the advanced sequence, which has as, as its goal to open up the canal to a 1505 before you can then finish with the basic sequence. So now the 1505 has uh, been reached. It's time now to go to a finishing file. And I determined based on the uh, engagement of these files that we're probably going to use a um, 3004 as our finishing file in this case. So now we're going to use a 3004 and once again with the OTR 500, this, this is memory one setting on the handpiece which is 500 RPM with the OTR and you can see here in slow motion how the OTR is being engaged uh, with its uh, as soon as it reaches the torque setting which I have set it to be at uh, basically uh, 0.2 newton centimeters it starts to uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees uh, with 180 degree forward clockwise motion before it remeasures the torque. So moving my way down here and uh, remember this is a canal that's already been prepared to a 1505 and after a few rhythm motions the 3004 reached the apex. So the beauty of the ESX along with the uh, presence of the booster tip is that we were able to get a 1505 uh, shape and then finish with a 3004 e immediately from there. So now let's fast forward the same thing with the 3004 in all of the other canals and um, the goal here is to use the same thing that I just showed and demonstrated in the mesiolingual canal and all the other three canals that are remaining which is to just work uh, our way down gently um, uh, in each canal until the 3004 reaches the apex. Now that we have all four canals uh, prepared to a size uh, 3004, it is time to apply the irrigation. At this point, I have skipped through the irrigation protocol, which I don't want to um, downplay it. It's a significant and a very important part of the success, obviously. Uh, the shape is created and then you apply all of your irrigation protocols to disinfect the remaining space. But clearly uh, that would be a boring uh, thing to watch me just irrigate there. So I'm going to skip that. We will have additional uh, video tutorials on specifics of irrigation in these cases and what are some of the best methods. But once it's been irrigated, the canal, all four canals have been irrigated and dried, now it's time to apply the bioceramic sealer. So we're basically, I'm using the advanced protocol here, here under the scope, which means injecting the BC sealer to the upper half of the root canal, and then um, working the, um, you know, the sealer that I have placed down to the apex. And I'm now using my, uh, you could use either the expediter or your finishing file at this point on memory six, which is a reverse uh, type of emotion for um, the handpiece in order to basically push the um, sealer down to the full apex. Now I've put the matching cones and take a cone shot that shows that all four canals have been uh, basically um, prepared uh, completely and the uh, the, the working length is accurate. Now I'm using the Endo Pro 270 here to sear off the cones right at the level of the RFS using a number 10 plugger first, followed by a number 9, condense the, uh, the gutta percha right at the level of the RFS, and then uh, place some um, um, Buji 9 or glass ionum or something in the axis opening before the tooth uh, is sent out back to the patient's general dentist for, um, uh, for restoration. Now, if you can see here what we ended up doing in that fairly you know uh, complex case which is you know an advanced case uh, we ended up using four rotary files no hand files at all and the procedure took about 30 minutes and this is really the beauty of the combination of the technology of the booster tip the sequence of the endo of the ESX advanced protocol with the help of OTR and the rhythm motion. So the combination of the motion and the design of the file and a good and robust sequence with hybridization of taper has allowed me to do this four, uh, file, this, this four canal molar uh, in a short period of time with only uh, four files and an orifice opener. And here is the final x-ray. As you can see, all four canals have been filled adequately to the apex using the synergy with the endo um, sync and endo sync AI. And here's another angle that shows the immediate post-op of this case, uh, demonstrating the um, 
overall synergy that you could get from using this handpiece as well as the ESX uh, files with this specific protocol that I will get into much more detail in the future for you guys. So for Rewaldendo, uh, coming from the beautiful islands of Turks and Caicos, this is uh, Ali Nassin. I hope you found this a little tutorial helpful.